Hello everyone and welcome to the Vain Glory Collegiate Star League Grand Finals. My name is Tasty Bacon. I will be your host and caster for tonight and we have an excellent matchup for you. It is the best of the best. The two teams that made it all the way here fought through eight other teams in the regular season and playoffs in order to get to this point and it all comes down to this one last best of three to crown the first ever vain collegiate vainglory champion there is a five thousand dollar scholarship prize pool up for grabs the winner tonight will take home the majority of that and it is going to be a uh, heck of a game. It's going to be American River College, who you may have seen in past broadcasts. They have been tearing through every opposition that has sta stood in their way. And they are looking to have a repeat performance against University of California Merced. They are the challengers here. The looking for revenge. The only loss that they have had in the entire season and playoffs was to American River during the regular season portion of this tournament. So they want to try and get themselves a win here so that they can be the ones walking away with $2,000 worth of scholarship money for their team. But again, American River, they have looked absolutely dominant, have not even dropped a single game over the course of these best of threes that they have played in. So for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the Collegiate Star League, what this is, it is a collegiate esports association as teams form uh, themselves t uh, amongst their peers at their college and they go ahead and get themselves registered at cstarleague.com. Make sure you head on over there if you are interested in joining next season. But for now, uh, they... Get themselves onto those teams. They get put into a bracket for Vainglory. It was 10 colleges selected to compete and then split up into two divisions, East and West. They played four games over a five-week season where they you know, determined the standings that you're seeing cycle through on your screen right now. The top three teams from each division then moved on to the playoffs where it was a single elimination bracket. And yet UC Merced able to rise up through there, proving that the Western region was the more dominant region of the Collegiate Vainglorious. Both of these top two teams are from the Western division. But that's enough talking. We are going to be getting all the players ready to go for game number one of this best of three grand finals. Before we do, though, we're just going to take a very, very, very brief break. Do not go anywhere. It's just going to be game number one starting in just a few seconds. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. All right, here we go. Game number one of the best of three grand finals for the title of best collegiate vein glory team in the country. And to start things off, it is going to be a Kashka ban for American River. As you can see, their roster is the same as it's been all season long. Status E36 and Joker. Of course, this team goes by the name of Liberation X. They are a former professional team in the Vainglory scene, and that is, can kind of allude to why they maybe have been so dominant over the course of this circuit. Over on the side of UC Merced, it is the CP Gang, and they are comprised of Brennan 05, Cruz for Cross, and Iniesta 8. 
They are going to be looking to, again, topple the Giants in this David versus Goliath type battle. The picks are coming through fairly quickly. We've got the Kestrel banned away. Lyra locked in first. That's one of the three big power picks, along with that Lance, who did come through for the side of UC Merced. So Lance uh, Celeste going to be a uh, pretty strong early late game kind of mix up there. Like Celeste, obviously very strong in the late game, but going to have to contest with that hyper late game carry Gwen. Arden, the final pick, means we are going to be seeing either a carry Arden or a carry Lyra in this game, and that's really exciting to see from the side of American River. Final pick of this draft for UC Merced will be the Sky. As we take a look at where these heroes are going, it looks like Status is going to be looking to take the Lyra into the jungle. That's not a typical spot for Lyra to end up, that's for sure. We'll see if it works out for them. I mean, it, the way that they've been playing this season, you almost feel like they could play any pick anywhere and it'll work out for them. But uh, again, this is the finals. This is the game where they need to win in order to secure themselves $2,000 worth of scholarship money for the team. Not too shabby for the first ever season of the Collegiate Vainglory. So we'll keep our eyes on status and how he's going to be building coming out of the jungle on this Lyra. That's going to be kind of where my focus will be for the majority. Looking over at the other side, it is going to be a little bit more of a standard uh, jungle lane matchup uh, with the Celeste going to the lane and Weapon Sky most likely going to be the jungle build for UC Merced. But early on, Brennan should actually have a little bit of an advantage in the lane against Joker uh, just because Celeste versus Gwen. Gwen just takes so long to actually ramp up to the point where she becomes that late game hyper carry. And I really want to see members of UC Merced try and take advantage of it, but an impale does not connect. That could have been really big. If it did hit, may have been the start of a nice trade in favor of Merced instead. Joker rotating on down to join in this party. And a party it is indeed, as we've got all six players kind of uh, fighting it out a little bit. Not much is going to come from it, though, when all is said and done. However, our American River going to look for a jungle invade. They definitely seem to want to, but they realize they're not really going to be able to get too much out of it. And so they just back off. Things kind of starting off fairly even here in the first you know, minute and a half or so. No aggression, no, or no over-aggression, I should say. And... Uh, as a result, not going to be having any kills, Not nothing getting stolen away. Both teams just going to kind of settle in for a little bit. E36 makes his way on up into the lane. So offer a little bit of protection for Joker, but now a rotation down into the jungle. But they're going to be met right in the face by members of UC Merced. And they got a, quite a bit down to E36. A scout trap not helping E36's health either. But as we just kind of continue along, this is you know, the style for Liberation X at American River College. They just try and be very aggressive in the early game, look to take a lead and just never let up. And right now with Status moving in with E36, they're not going to be able to get into this jungle in time to steal away the backs. However, they will have an opportunity to try and take these this mid-treant away. And uh, maybe the shop camps as well, but that tree and it is going to go over to status. So they do get the one steal at least out of this, which will give them a very minor gold lead. A almost insignificant lead at this point. Uh, even even early on when you know, gold is a little bit more important, it's just such a small lead that it's actually really not even there. Because with this lane farm going over to Brennan, you can see the gold is just about even. However, this could be our first real big fight. Is it looks like no, and yes, the not quite gonna pull the trigger on trying to go too aggressive. Neither team, especially not UC Merced, wants to be the one to make a mistake. But Brennan, maybe a little bit too far forward, is going to get caught out there. 
as Joker finds the first kill of the game, immediately gets followed up by E36, jumping on in, taking down Iniesta. And this is this power of this American River College team. Their synergy is absolutely ridiculous. They've been playing together for so long. They just you know, work together as one well-oiled machine. And they're able to find those two kills to start things off. And I mean, maybe that's the snowball starting. You know, it's still sitting at the very top of the mountain. But it has at least been pushed a little bit. And is, uh, you know, have to be wary of it gathering too much momentum if you are on the side of UC Merced. E36 is going to get stunned up, but it's not really in too much of danger. However, Iniesta actually getting some good damage down. Status going to have to use that healing sigil and finds the kill onto Iniesta instead. This is what's so tough about the American River. Just when you think you have an advantage, oh, beautiful! What a sigil put down by status, just knowing where the lance is going to be, throwing out the sigil and popping it just enough damage to find that kill. And like I said, it's that that's the difficulty. You think you're safe, you think you maybe got the upper hand. American River just always seems to turn it back around in their favor. With those four kills, they've now suddenly amassed themselves a thousand gold lead. No, again that snowball it's it's always looming and now it's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum so you look up towards the top joker getting some solid damage down on it to brennan so they're just gonna be looking to try and get some chip damage on this turret whenever possible america really likes to Push this lane early, take down that first turret as quickly as they can, just to open up the map. Three on two, they don't seem to care. They never really do. They're always so confident in their abilities to push things to the limit. And, you know, they know when to back out, when to go aggressive. And it definitely shows. I mean, again, undefeated thus far throughout the regular season and playoffs. Not even dropping a single game. That's the one thing I cannot stress enough. They don't know what it's like to lose in the CSL at all. And so, uh, for American River, this aggression continuing to pay off. Joker rotating over from the lane into the jungle. Finds himself a kill. Now back up in the lane. Status and E36 going to be going at it with Brennan and Cruz for Cross. Status takes a bit of damage thanks to a core collapse stun, but... Is that Lyra just going to be healing himself right back up? Oasis high hits. There's the Sigil. Not quite going to be enough damage to take down Brennan. The status knows that his target is low, or he could find another target in Cruise for Cross. But with those minions getting there, just going to be putting it down that Sigil, delaying. And yes, the Cruise for Cross for trying to stop these minions. I'm a little bit surprised that uh, we actually saw the recall from Joker and didn't see them try and push harder onto this turret. But right now, E36 jumping in. He's by himself, but he doesn't care. Status is there to try and support him, but he is going to be going down to that turret. So maybe a little bit too aggressive. Status will find at least one kill off of this. Uh, that may be all, maybe not, because Brendan is very, very low, but without having any extra minions there. That will be status backing on out. So status starting off with the alternating current. First item on Lyra. And you, you expect to see that from a carry Lyra. It's just that you don't expect to see a jungle carry Lyra. So I wasn't really sure what we were going to get as the first item focus. But it looks like that's just going to be building this as if he was in the lane. And right now Joker skipping around with this Gwen, taking out that first turret, seven and a half minutes in. Again, not the quickest turret we've seen from uh, American River, but still a very early turret to take down. Even though they do lose out another kill there, Joker giving up his life for that turret. That's a worthwhile trade. This, uh, turret for a kill that is something you'll always take, but Take a look at the gold difference that has now grown. Two and a half thousand gold. Brennan is still looking for his first tier three item. Joker has completed two of them. 
that's kind of, I mean, Brenton does have enough gold at this point to go and finish off that first tier three, but it just really kind of shows you the state of this game when Joker is two items completed before Brennan is able to get one. You know, my fight right now would just be heavily in favor of uh, the side of American River because of the fact that they have this big lead as far as items go. In fact, the only tier three item on the side of a UC Merced is that Fountain of Renewal for Cruiser Cross. Brennan takes a lot of damage. That ace is high, had connected, but was under the turret, thankfully, so no kills just yet. But this turret is going to be taking a lot of damage. Next wave of minions is coming along soon, but it looks like members of American River, they're just going to put that pressure on. Take down the second turret just two minutes, less than two minutes after the first one. And they find more pressure here. A nice ultimate from Brendan along with that stun. There goes Iniesta diving on through onto the back lines, finding that kill. But now E36 <laughs> says, you know what? I may be a roamer, but I can still fight with the best of them. Finds a kill. Now Brendan needs to be careful. These heroic perk shots from Joker are doing so much damage onto Brennan. That forces out the Fountain of Renewal from Cruiser Cross just so that they can try and push Joker and E36 away from trying to get pressure onto that tier 3 turret. Again, looks kind of uh, like more of the same for American River. They build themselves up to about a 4,000 gold lead just under that. Cruiser Cross just trying to push E36 out of the jungle quite literally using that Githian wall, knocking him away constantly and just making sure that they can get some farm on their side to try and get themselves back into this game. But it's going to be a very difficult task. The snowball has been rolling for quite some time now. It has grown in size and it is the larger it gets, the more difficult it is to stop. Status going to eat a Helio right to the face and that's single shatter glass doing quite a bit of work for Brennan but is it going to be enough work gauntlet goes down gets a stun cruise for cross going to be the next target here as Brennan falls nice forward barrage from Iniesta trying to just dissuade E36 but they go diving under the turret anyway now with a full wave of minions they're just going to go for this one tier 3 turret not going to be long until that falls Iniesta is going to go down and it's just before Brennan respawns that equals an ace for American River that means they can now try and maybe keep pushing with these ace buff minions but they don't want to push the luck they are going to be backing out Knowing that Brennan is up and has that solar storm, they don't want to risk it because those gold bounties are getting immense. One kill at this point of the game would put so much gold into the pockets of UC Merced. So very wise from the members of American River to play it a little bit safer. It's 11 to 3 now. The kills definitely swinging heavily in favor of american river They're looking for another fight aces high is going to hit brennan but it's going to be iniesta the first one to fall that kept brennan in place long enough that they can follow this one up joker's taking a lot of damage and is actually going to have to back off of this but e36 is going to try and find this kill fountain of renewal is not available for either side and joker will step up to find that last hit and get the kill Meanwhile, town in the middle of the map, Status is, uh, just says, hey, you guys have fun fighting up there. I'm going to get us a gold miner. He's taking quite a bit of damage, but of course, we'll have those sigils to put down. Keep himself healed up enough to finish this one off. E36 is going to come in and offer a little bit of help as well. An immense gold payout for the American River College. As that will extend their gold lead now up to... The uh, about a little under 8,000 mark as they complete that gold miner, steal away another camp, and just buy a couple more items. Another tier 3 item completed for status as he has that broken myth. Uh, meanwhile, picks up that infusion as well. No infusion for Joker, but sitting on four completed items. 
three of them offensive, and the Aegis, they're going to be looking to get damage onto Kuz for Cross. Now, and yes, there's also target. Brennan gets caught on the bottom side and just gets melted through Iniesta is gonna be falling even on the sanctuary it doesn't seem to matter these final two turrets they're gonna go down fairly quickly if there's minions there with that one minion that was able to strip the barrier off that first turret it went down super quick now this final turret it's gonna go down a little bit slower because there's no minions to strip the barrier but now that they step in the turret is gone it is just a crystal Cruiser Cross is going to try and find a kill. E36 is super low. Canyon, yes, to get this one. Really needs to switch focus over to Joker. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side, status and Brennan trade out. So do Iniesta and Joker. It is just E36 and Cruiser Cross. E36 does not have the health. And it will be an ace for UC Merced. Cruiser Cross, however, the only member left alive. I Means don't really know what he's going to be able to do off of this. As it's not 15 minutes into the game. The minions are so far away from pushing into that first turret. They're really not going to get anything off of that ace other than a, a little bit of extra time here in game number one. So, with the jungle now getting cleared out on both sides. You got to figure no turrets left. That means that the members of American River are going to be able to just push in and take this game whenever they want. I mean, they've been winning just about every single team fight, especially if it's one that starts on even footing. Status a little bit far out, but not really going to be in too much trouble. That's the thing. The members of UC Merced, they see one member, they know the rest are soon to follow. There goes Brennan, and yes, is going to fall as well. It's just Cruise for Cross. Takes the portals backwards, but I mean, Lance very good at preventing aces, but not when you fall this far behind. American River College, another ace at the 15 minute mark, and they will now be able to push in. No Kraken necessary. 20 to 6 as they get onto the crystal and will be taking it down. That is game number one to American River College, and they now sit just one crystal away from claiming the title of collegiate star league vein glory champions so we'll see if they can pull it off in another 2-0 sweep or will uc merced be able to fight back with a valiant effort and take this series to a game three that's what we're going to be looking to find out here in just a few moments but first Gonna take a brief break. I'm gonna get a word in from one of our wonderful sponsors. Only Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.
All right, everyone, we are back and we're gonna be getting underway for game number two here in just a moment. As soon as we get confirmation that both teams are ready, we will be kicking this one off and seeing if UC Merced can do what has been previously impossible and take down the team of, from American River College. Or will American River go 2-0 as they have done so many times already this season and pick up their championship? That's what we're looking to find out. And uh, as soon as we get confirmation again from the teams, we are going to be getting right on into this one. So for now, nothing really much else to do other than just kind of continue to mention that <laughs> Liberation X, American River College, they have been absolutely dominant. They have been just rolling through all opposition. 4-0, 5-0 if you count the bye week, and then two undefeated series in the playoffs as well to get, or sorry, just one because they had a bye in the first round because they were first seed from their division. But uh, they are, again, looking to complete the undefeated season the undefeated run through the series. As you can hear, we are getting into the draft for game number two. Teams have swapped sides, as you can see in just a moment. It is that 1-0 in favor of American River. So what will UC Merced do? Backs against the wall. If they lose this, then they will be second place which still not too shabby second place finish getting a thousand dollars in scholarship money for their team it's uh not the worst outcome that you could have in a matchup like this but they're gonna be banning away the lyra not gonna let status get his hands on that as a carry you know who knows who would have played it on the side of american river as uh, they just showed that they can really flex it to anywhere they want we've seen lyra as a laner as a roamer and now getting that victory as a jungler it's going to be kestrel the ban of choice for american river so now who does you see merced want they want the catherine that is a bold pickup on the first rotation the first pick of the game to grab that catherine leaves quite a few power picks open but status he's gonna go for this jewel I'm really curious to see if it will be a weapon or a crystal jewel. It could go either way. Both of them are very fun to play and watch. So we should be in for a treat. Lance for E36 most likely will be staying with E36. Unless they do decide to uh, pick up someone else as a roamer and make uh, the Lance their jungle carry. But for now it is going to be Cruise for Cross picking up the sky. And who do they round out the composition with? I feel like they need someone that is going to be a little bit tankier. You know, a little bit of a bruiser. Put the, Maybe put the sky in the lane. Grab yourself something like a Rona or a Rhyme will do it. That will be tankier. We'll see how well the Rhyme can work out against the Jewel Lance combo. That's a very survivable jungler for Iniesta to be playing. Assuming that Iniesta is going to be jungling for them. And there's the Vox coming out from the side of American River. And now as we get on into the loading screen to load onto the Halcyon Fold. This could potentially be the final game of the Collegiate Vainglory inaugural season here at CSL. And who is going to take it home? That is the question that needs to be answered. And again, we could be getting that answer here in just a few minutes. As we get onto the Halcyon fold, UC Merced on the blue team. American River College on the red. And as we look at the initial purchases, that is a crystal bit for status on the jewel 
And for those of you who may not know, Crystal Jewel, it's all about the ultimate. The big red button, or as we may call it, the big blue button when you're going for the CP build. It will just tear through opponents, unfortunate enough to be caught within that laser. We'll see if status can make it work. A crystal bit to start for Joker is also very interesting. Uh, we'll see if they do are going for that double crystal composition. Uh, it should actually work quite well with Rhyme, Catherine, Sky. And they're going to be kind of grouped up a fair bit as they look for team fights. But uh, let's see if they can take advantage of this situation. Early rotation down from the lane will actually prevent American River from going too aggressive here on the first jungle clear. As both sides get their entirety of their own jungle. Let's we'll see if they look for another move here. Joker is going to actually now duck down to the shop and will be picking up a little bit of we a weapon blade and a, a little bit of attack speed. So. This could actually end up just being a weapon box, maybe grabbing that little bit of crystal for the wave clear early on. Uh, not entirely sure what the mindset there is. There's obviously a couple different options. Maybe, again, looking for that little bit of extra wave clear early or just looking to fake out their opponents and get them to build a little bit more defensively right away, knowing, making them think they're going into a double crystal. But... They haven't done so yet over on the side of UC Merced, if that was the intention. I feel like it was just for a little bit of extra wave clear for Joker and going into these the early first couple minutes of the game and wanting to make sure that this lane stays pressured so that he can make the rotations. Brennan going to be taking a good bit of damage. Of course, it could also just be picking up that weapon blade for a little bit of extra, uh, extra last hitting ability on the Vox. But typically, if that's the plan, you get the weapon blade first before anything else. Right now, status going to be coming through the jungle, looking to invade onto Cruiser Cross. Actually steals away one, gets both of those backs. That is not terribly good for Cruise for Cross. Is not going to be going down here, but Status, he's going to be more than happy to get those steals. Now back over on the other side, Brendan and Joker going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It looks like Joker will actually get the advantage, uh, the edge on that one and find the kill. Status tries to steal away the... Uh, or Sorry, I actually made a mistake there. It was Cruise for Cross that got those backs. Uh, it was the blue letter, blue numbering that came up. So it was Cruise for Cross that got the back. So that was actually very well played by the Rhyme. But there's going to be Rhyme coming up into the lane, avenging his fallen teammate and grabbing the kill onto Joker, making it one for one. As you can see, because Rhyme was able to get those backs, the gold is still very much easier. Even despite the fact that status did steal away the mid treant, that was all status was able to take from the opposing jungle. So, again, nicely played by Cruise for Cross, finding those jungle camps and getting a kill. And this is interesting. Now, you know, I was talking about maybe it was going to be a double crystal for American River. It's actually double crystal for the side of UC Merced. Whereas Joker is going into this weapon box pretty firmly now. And yes, they're going to get stunned up repeatedly. This is one of the strengths of having a jewel paired with a lance. You land that impale, it's a very easy stun follow up and allows oh, then E36 on this lance to get into position for a Githian wall stun if you need it as well. Another impale going to connect on the cruiser cross, dropping down very low. Really, all three members. Of UC Merced getting taken down pretty low there, but none of them going to be falling. That's the good news. We take a look at the gold score. It's still pretty even, 8.7 to 8.6k. But again, you know, similar start to as we had in game number one. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> American River, they start just finding kills like that. I mean, E36 didn't even land the Impale, and it didn't matter. Joker has that breaking point first item completed already and is going to be able to start just pulling ahead really trying to be a bully in this lane with the help of E36 and that's going to make life difficult for both Brennan and the rest of his team as they now have to spend a lot more time up into the lane that's going to allow status to make more steals Cruise for Cross is taking a ton of damage 
is still going to be hanging on to life, though. However, Iniesta might be caught out a bit here. Is there going to be an impale? It does hit onto Iniesta. Iniesta's so close to falling, but E36 just can't quite finish that one off. Status, big red button going to come through, but Cruiser Cross just narrowly staying alive through it. There's going to be the Rocket Leap really trying to find that kill, but not going to be able to pick it up. However, then turns his attention over to Brennan and says, you know what, you're low too. But no kills to come through there. It's just pressure being put on left and right from American River College, however, is again just gonna be looking to force you see Merced to have to answer to them, to have to play reactionary. And meanwhile, they can you know go on the aggression, force their opponents to have to play in a specific area so they know where they are. They can then make more aggressive plays off the back of that, which again can adds to the continuously mounting pressure. So it's really just that's the pure definition of the snowball effect that American River College has when they play. They force you into positions early on and then take advantage of the fact that they know where you are and they know what positions you're in. And they're going to be going in again onto Brennan. Another one big red button does not connect. And doesn't get anything really done as a result. E36 is pretty low. We're going to get a stun to Iniesta though. And that's going to allow Joker to just finish off the kill. That is a third kill of the game. We're taking a look down at the jungle to see Cruiser Cross is actually hanging out in the American River jungle, looking to steal away some camps when they spawn. So up in this lane, Joker and E36 just continuously putting this pressure on. Got to give credit to Brennan, though. Brennan's doing a great job in terms of CS 62 to 69 for the amount of pressure that's been put onto this lane. That is a very impressive number to be able to keep up with Joker despite how much they've been trying to push him in and harass him and steal away you know the opportunities for him to get that far. Meanwhile Cruiser Cross gonna get found here in the jungle and will be taken out. Actually got a lot of damage done onto Joker but just not quite enough for a kill. So as a result it's the fourth kill of the game going the way of American River. Still only one to the name of UC Merced. The gold lead is starting to grow. It's going to be a nice stun stopping the impale. And yes, the maybe saving Brennan's life there as a result. So good moves from the Catherine. Good reaction time to pop that merciless pursuit. Get the stun mid impale. Let's see what's American River going to do. Looks like they maybe want to fight here. Joker is kind of stuck on the wrong side of the wall, though. That's going to be not a stun onto Iniesta, but it looks like it should be more than enough damage when you add on Joker as well. But no, he's able to get out. Uses that Fountain of Renewal. The Fountain was used on only himself, though. Big Red Button is available. Kind of surprised Status hasn't pulled the trigger on that to just pick up this kill. But they don't need it. They go diving under the turret. Pick up the kill. And now here comes the rest of UC Merced to try and defend this turret. There's going to be Cruise for Cross getting not actually impaled or stunned up. But the big red button finally comes out and finally hits the mark. Grabbing a kill for American River and status on this crystal jewel. Actually going into perhaps a storm guard, a storm crown as well. Has that storm guard banner. American River, they're just going to be pushing in this turret. Nine minutes in, a little bit slower pace than we're used to seeing from American River in the CSL, but still first ones to get that turret destroyed. We'll see how much that opens up the map for them. As it should do wonders. Looking at the items, Joker, now two items completed as he gets that Tyrant's monocle. It's the uh, Tusk. Breaking point double monocle build and Yesta is just going to be melting underneath that damage And now can they find Brennan as well a beautiful death from above will actually stun up Joker But it's not gonna be enough Joker is still able to find the kill going unbeatable now Cruise for cross will get stunned the big red button is available and it's in a pretty tight spate I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't been thrown out yet there it goes forces Cruise for cross away from the turtle a little bit and that will allow E36 to land an impale to finish off the kill. Joker is low, but not low enough to be deterred from taking down that second turret of the game just a minute after the first turret fell. And this is 
Just American River starting to look like American River as they have another big lead brewing. 22,500 gold to 18,500. 9 to 1 on the kills. And of course, that 2 to 0 on the turrets. Just everything seems to go their way. They are dominant force. Brennan going to be finding it out once again. Another nice stun from the death from above, but again, just not enough to allow him to survive the onslaught that is this weapon power Vox in the hands of Joker. So they just continue now to clear out these minions, push up a little bit further. Iniesta going to be finding them and does not get uh, rooted as a nice imp uh, merciless pursuit. Stunned out uh, during the impale again. Iniesta now going to be in trouble as they do find the kill on the cruise for cross. Iniesta will fall. That is ridiculous. I agree. And now Brennan, the last member alive, gonna get impaled, gonna get stunned. And this should be the ace. It will be the ace. Joker was extremely close to falling, but the ace will get him healed right back up. And now American River are into the base. They destroy that last tier three turret. And now Cruise for Cross is immediately gonna get popped. They turn their attention onto perhaps Iniesta. If they get this kill and they could look to end this game, it is just Brennan to defend. They are onto the crystal turrets now. The first one is almost down. Can they look for this ace? They will lose out on E36. Joker gonna try and finish the one, but the two turrets is too much. And he will go down as well. And the game will continue for the members of UC Merced. As we continue on with this game, again, at least a couple minutes longer. It's going to be tough for uh, UC Merced to do anything impactful at this point. They are going to be looking for a minion mine, or a gold mine, sorry. As I have to uh, get this phone plugged in so that my battery doesn't die on us. And, uh, that would be very bad. There we go. All plugged in, good to go. We are going to be finishing off this game. We are not going to be missing out on crowning our champion, as it seems like we will be doing once this game is finished, because American River College have themselves another massive lead, and they could be looking to close this game out. Crystal turrets damaged. One fight is all it's going to take for American River at this point. Brendan, even just one shot from the Vox does a big chunk of damage. And yes, they're actually getting a lot of damage bounced back off of that Storm Garden bubble. But it is going to be the first kill picked up there. Cruise for Cross is going to fall right after. And there's the ace for American River. Those breaking point stacks are just immense on Joker once he gets rolling. And those crystal turrets are down. And with this, American River College Liberation X, they are your Vain Glory Collegiate Star League Fall 2016 champions. The first ever Collegiate Star League Vain Glory champions. Liberation X, this is a team, you know. When they were on the professional circuit, they were the first ever North American champions. And now they are also the first ever collegiate champions. So definitely a pedigree there to be had amongst this team. Status E36 and Joker picking up the victory in once more dominant 2-0 fashion. Beautiful performance, beautiful season for American River College, they will be taking home the grand prize of $2,000 worth of scholarship money for them. Uh, absolutely well-deserved. And over on the other side, you also have to give congratulations to UC Merced. They fought hard. They fought well. They were the second best team. Unfortunately, just American River too much to overcome. And they were not able to dethrone these uh, monstrous players on the side of American River. So that is going to just about do it for us here. 
at the Collegiate Star League Vein Glory Playoffs. It's the final game of the season. And again, champions, Liberation X. Congratulations to them. Now, if you are interested in playing in the Collegiate Star League, make sure you head over to cstarleague.com. You can find yourself some teammates at your college. Sign up to play. It is free to join, and you can end up walking away with some scholarship money for yourselves. Next season does begin in winter. As soon as the you know, once colleges get back from their holiday breaks, that's when the next season starts up, and you do not want to miss it. Vainglory, in particular, is going to be doubling the prize pool. That's right, ten thousand dollars will be on the line next season. If you have a couple of friends that play Vainglory, or just go and force a couple of friends to start playing Vainglory, start practicing and try and get yourself some of that money. And if you don't play Vainglory, again, definitely recommend you start. But if you play other games, League of Legends, Dota 2, uh, there's CSGO, all sorts of other esports happen within C Star League, and you know more than just those ones I said, but I know those ones do happen for a fact. But there are others as well. Head on over again, cstarleague.com, in order to check out what games are offered and sign up. If you're looking to check out what else is going on, as you can see on the schedule that rotates through, it says there's some surprise stuff coming up. Life, speak of the devil, the schedule shows up right there. Uh, follow on social media at CSL is the primary account, uh, but there's also then different accounts or sorry at C star league. If you search CSL, it'll still show up, but at C star league, the letter C, the word star, the word league is the primary CSL Twitter account. Uh, there's also CSL Vainglory. Uh, CSL LOL for League of Legends. All, all the different games have their own Twitters and that kind of fun stuff. Do want to give one last thank you to our sponsors, of course, Band Gaming. You've been seeing their ads run throughout the broadcasts. Uh, they are really doing a great job to help us with the communication between teams and players and admins. And, of course, Twitch.tv. We would not be anywhere near where we are at CSL without the help of Twitch. So... Last thank you, of course, goes out to you, the viewers, the wonderful viewers that make all this happen. Please make sure to give this stream a follow. Head on over to twitch.tv slash cstarleague and follow the other stream that is going on as well. And well, until next time, until next season, until the special broadcasts that are going to be happening during the offseason, I hope you all have a great night. Take care. <laughs>